What is going on guys? In today's video, I will show you the top 3 best builds in Throne of Liberty. So at the start, I will give you a quick overview of each build, then I will explain what skills and upgrades should you focus on. Then as well, we'll see what is the best gear and how to get it. And then finally, we will go over the weapon masteries, stats, your skill rotations, and even what guardian should you use. So we would be able to get the highest damage possible and much more. So for the first build, we have the crossbow and dagger. This is currently the highest DPS setup in the game, because both of your weapons have extremely high damage, and if you use the build right, then you will consistently reach 20 stacks of thunderclouds, which will give you explosive damage. Crossbow and daggers are both unique weapons because they are dual wielded and this will give us a chance to get a double hit with their offhand. If you're looking for the best meta DPS build, then this is the one for you. So let's move over to the build. And first off, we have our skills. So for defensive skill, we use Block Blade. While for active skills, we get Inject Venom, Mother Nature's Protest, Selfless Diffusion, Mortal Mark, Nimble Leap, Quick Fire, Mana Exchange, Knife Throwing, Fatal Stigma, Cleaving Moonlight, Brutal Incision, and Weak Point Shot. Because of our specialization setup, we'll have Inject Venom turn into Lightning Infusion, and Brutal Incision will turn into the Thunderclouds Bombing. And then for passive skills, we get Bloodlust, Nature's Power, Ambi Dexterity, Piercing Strike, Assassin's Instincts, Wrathful Edge, Destructive Fang, and Murderous Energy. Next we have Skill Specialization, and for Inject Venom, select Lightning Infusion and Cooldown Reduction. Then for Selfless Diffusion, don't get anything. For Nimble Leap, select Consecutive Use and Cooldown Reset. For Mana Exchange, get Skill Effect Enhanced. For Fatal Stigma, get only Damage Increase. Then for Brutal Incision, get Thunderclouds Bombing. For Mother Nature's Protest, get Lightning Arrow. Then for Mortal Mark, don't select anything. Then for Quick Fire, get Minimum Chain Fire, Damage Increase and Cooldown. For Knife Throwing, get Additional Hit. Then for Cleaving Moonlight, select Consecutive Use, Effect Accumulation and Attack Speed Increase. And finally, for weak point shot, don't get anything. Next we have weapon mastery, and this is how it should look like for the crossbow. So take a look at the middle and get everything from mystical regen until cold vision. Then now go to the bottom and select the entire row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the dagger. So pretty much the same thing. In the middle, start getting everything from silent dash until sorrowful silence. And then go to the bottom and get the entire row. Next, let's take a look at our gear. And all of this you can easily farm yourself. If you're interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So first off, we are using the Rex Chimera's crossbow, with traits like hit chance, heavy attack chance, and added attack speed. Next we have Liquirius's Wicked Thorns, with traits like hit chance, heavy attack chance, and critical hit chance. Next we have Elusive Hexweaver Hat, with max health, melee evasion, and cooldown speed. Next we have Supreme Devotion, with mana region, skill damage resistance, and debuff duration. Next we have Soul Mirror Carapace with Magic Evasion, Ranged Evasion and Buff Duration. Next we have Ascended Guardian Gloves with Max Mana, Melee Evasion and Added Attack Speed. Next we have Elusive Hexweaver Pants with Max Health, Magic Evasion and Debuff Duration. Next we have Ascended Guardian Shoes with Max Mana, Mana Region and Melee Evasion. Next up we have Clasp of the Conqueror with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. Next we have Braces of the Primal King with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance and Debuff Duration. Next we have the Violent Signet with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. Next we have Sapphire Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. And finally we have Belt of Endless Slaughter with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance and Debuff Duration. Next we have our Guardian Choice, and for our build the best choice is the Shade Revenant Steno. This Guardian launches projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack, which in turn will proc our Mother Nature's Protest and Mortal Mark skills, so he will increase our damage by a massive amount. And now finally, we have come to the gameplay. So the highest damage rotation is to use Lightning Infusion, then Mother Nature's Protest, then Fatal Stigma, then Mortal Mark, then Cleaving Moonlight, then Quick Fire, then Selfless Diffusion, then Thunderclouds Bombing for the first time, then Knife Throwing, then Cleaving Moonlight again, and then finally the Thunderclouds Bombing for the second time. And if you want a more in-depth look into this build where I explain every single detail, then click the link in description to watch my dedicated crossbow and dagger video. So for the second build, we have the Staff and Dagger. This setup is a powerful mage assassin that has insane amount of high single target burst damage. Our main playstyle will revolve around maintaining 10 burning stacks and 20 thundercloud stacks, which will provide exceptional AoE and single target DPS. 
Due to the high cooldowns in this build, you need plenty of cooldown speed for this playstyle to work. But if you follow instructions and build it right, you'll become unstoppable. So let's take a look at our setup. And first off, we have our skills. So for defensive skill, we use the Blood Blade, while for active skills, we get Serial Firebombs, Inferno Wave, Fireball Barrage, Infernal Meteor, Inject Venom, High Focus, Cleaving Moonlight, Judgment Lightning, Ice Spear, Ankle Strike, Brutal Incision, and Inner Peace. Because of our specialization setup, we'll have Serial Firebombs turned into Focused Firebombs, then Infernal Meteor will turn into Hellfire Rain, then Inject Venom will turn into Lightning Infusion, then Ice Spear will turn into Ice Spear Bombardment, and finally, Brutal Incision will turn into the Thunderclouds Bombing. And for passive skills, we get the Assassin's Instincts, Destructive Fang, Wrathful Edge, Assassinism, Mana Amp, Flame Condensation, Forbidden Sanctuary, and Murderous Energy. Next, we have Skill Specialization, and for Serial Firebombs, we select the Focused Firebombs and Mobility. Then for Fireball Barrage, get the Fireball Frenzy. For Inject Venom, select Lightning Infusion and Cooldown Reduction. Then for Cleaving Moonlight, get Consecutive Use and Attack Speed Increase. For Ice Spear, get the Ice Spear Bombardment and Damage Increase. For Brutal Incision, select Thunderclouds Bombing and Cooldown Reduction. For Inferno Wave, get Cooldown, Consecutive Use and Burning. Then for Infernal Meteor, get the Hellfire Rain. For High Focus, get the Base Damage Boost. For Judgment Lightning and Inner Peace, don't select anything. And finally, for Ankle Strike, get the Offhand Weapon Activation. Next, we have Weapon Mastery, and this is how it should look like for the Staff. So get the middle first, then the entire bottom row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the Dagger. So pretty much the same thing. Get the middle first, and then the whole bottom row. Next, let's take a look at our gear. And all of this, you can easily farm yourself. If you're interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. First off, we are using 2 Blex Shattering Quarter Staff with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next, we have Lequirius' Wicked Thorns with Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next, we have Decorated Champion Crown with Mana Region, Melee Evasion, and Cooldown Speed. Next, we have Supreme Devotion with Mana Region, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next, we have Plate of the Field General with Melee Evasion, Range Evasion, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Alacritus Invoker Gloves with Magic Evasion, Melee Evasion, and Added Attack Speed. Next, we have Alacritus Invoker Pants with Mana Region, Magic Evasion, and Melee Evasion. Next, we have Sabatons of the Field General with Melee Evasion, Range Evasion, and Movement Speed. Next up, we have Clasp of the Conqueror with Max Ult, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Ancient Sarodama Braces with Mana Region, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next, we have Violent Signet with Max Ult, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Amber Dimensional Band with Max Ult, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. And finally, we have Belt of Meditation with Max Ult and Skill Damage Resistance. Next up, we have the stats. And at the end game, we want to get 50 Dexterity and 40 Perception. And then put the rest of your leftover points into Wisdom. Next, we have our Guardian choice, and we have two best options. The first one is Lady Knight Kamarshia. If you consistently find yourself needing more defense, then go with her. Or perhaps, if you want even more DPS, then use the Shade Revenant Steno. This Guardian has the highest damage in the game, as he can launch projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack. And finally, we have come to the gameplay. So the highest damage rotation is to use Lightning Infusion, then High Focus, then Hellfire Rain, then Focused Firebombs, then Inferno Wave, then Ankle Strike, then Cleaving Moonlight, then Thunderclouds Bombing, and now finish it off with Fireball Barrage. And now from here, we rinse and repeat. If you want a more in-depth look into this build where I explain every single detail, then click the link in description to watch my dedicated Staff and Daggers video. And now finally, for the last build, we have the Longbow and Dagger. In this setup, the Longbow provides high single-target DPS at range, while the Dagger provides amazing passives. This build has really good self-sustain and high single-target DPS. But you're very reliant on cooldown speed, so you'll want to make your build around reducing as much waiting time as possible. But if you follow instructions and build it right, then you'll become unstoppable. So let's take a look at our setup. And for defensive skill, we use the Block Blade. While for active skills, we get Zephyr's Knock, Ensnaring Arrow, Decisive Sniping, Strafing, Nature's Blessing, Deadly Marker, Inject Venom, Shadow Strike, Ankle Strike, Brutal Incision, Blitz, and Camouflage Cloak. Because of our specialization, our Inject Venom will turn into Lightning Infusion, our Shadow Strike will turn into Shadow Escape, and Brutal Incision will turn into the Thunderclouds Bombing. And then for passive skills, we get Rapid Fire Stance, Steady Aim, Sniper's Sense, 
Assassin's Instincts, Destructive Fang, Wrathful Edge, Roxy's Arrowhand, and Murderous Energy. Next, we have Skill Specialization. And for Zephyr's Knock, we want to select Damage Increase and Cooldown. Then for Decisive Sniping, get Charging Time, Damage Increase, Second Charging Time, and Mobility. For Nature's Blessing, get Whirlpool. Then for Inject Venom, select Lightning Infusion and Cooldown Reduction. For Ankle Strike, get Offhand Weapon Activation. For Blitz and Camouflage Cloak, don't get anything. Then for Ensnaring Arrow, get Hit Chance. For Strafing, select Gale and Consecutive Use. For Deadly Marker, don't get anything. For Shadow Strike, get Shadow Escape and Skill Distance Increased. And finally, for Brutal Incision, get Thundercloud Spawning. Next, we have Weapon Mastery, and this is how it should look like for the Longbow. So get the middle first, then the whole bottom row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the Dagger. So pretty much the same thing. Get the middle first, and then the whole bottom row. Next, let's take a look at our gear. And all of this you can easily farm yourself. If you're interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So first off, we are using the Carnixus Netherbow, with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Liquirius's Wicked Thorns, with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Divine Justiciar Mask, with Mana Region, Melee Evasion, and Cooldown Speed. Next we have Supreme Devotion, with Mana Region, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next we have Shadow Harvester Tunic, with Mana Region, Range Division, and Buff Duration. Next we have Shadow Harvester Grips with Mana Region, Magic Evasion, and Range Evasion. Next we have Alacritus Invoker Pants with Max Mana, Magic Evasion, and Melee Evasion. Next we have Sabatons of the Field General with Melee Evasion, Range Division, and Movement Speed. Next up we have Clasp of the Conqueror with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next we have Braces of the Primal King with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next we have the Violent Signet with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next we have Sapphire Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. And finally, we have the Belt of Endless Slaughter with Max Held, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next up we have the stats, and at the end game we want to get 50 Strength, 40 Perception, and then put the rest of your leftover points into Dexterity. Next we have our Guardian Choice, and the best one is the Shade Revenant Steno. This Guardian launches projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack. Since our build is great at both close and long range, so this guy works perfectly with our playstyle. And now finally we have come to the gameplay. And as this build is very versatile, I will give you two different rotations. So in the first one we use Nature's Blessing, then Ensnaring Arrow, then Camouflage Cloak, then Decisive Sniping, then Blitz, and now we finish it off with one more Decisive Sniping. And for the second rotation, this time we start by using Lightning Infusion, then Deadly Marker, then we activate Strafing twice, then now Zephyr's Knock, then Strafing for the third time, then Shadow Escape, then now Lightning Infusion for the second time, then Ankle Strike, then Thunderclouds Bombing, then Shadow Escape for the second time, and then we finish it off with Zephyr's Knock. And from here, we just rinse and repeat. And that's about it. Then for the second build, we have Longbow and Crossbow. This setup is godlike for PvE as it can dish out a constant barrage of damage. Also, by building up from your skills and passives, you'll get low cooldowns and have a very high amount of hit chance, ensuring that you can keep doing DPS for a very long time. So let's take a look at our setup. And for skills in defensive, we use Overtaker, while for active skills we get Deadly Marker, Selfless Diffusion, Mortal Mark, Blitz, Merciless Barrage, Quick Fire, Mana Exchange, Mother Nature's Protest, Nature's Blessing, Decisive Sniping, Strafing, and Zephyr's Knock. Because of our specialization, the Mortal Mark will turn into Detonation Mark and Merciless Barrage will turn into Wild Barrage. And then for passive skills, we get Rapid Fire Stance, Sniper's Sense, Roxy's Arrowhead, Nature's Power, MB Dexterity, Piercing Strike, Bloodlust, and Eagle Vision. Next we have Skill Specialization, and for Deadly Marker and Selfless Diffusion, we don't select anything. Then for Mortal Mark, get Detonation Mark. For Merciless Barrage, get Wild Barrage and Gale. For Mana Exchange, get Skill Effect Enhanced. Then for Nature's Blessing, select Whirlpool. Then for Strafing, get Gale and Consecutive Use. Then for Blitz, get Cooldown. Then for Quick Fire, get Gale, Minimum Chain Fire and Cooldown. For Mother Nature's Protest, get Lightning Arrow. For Decisive Sniping, select both of these charging times. And now finally, for the first knock, get Damage Increase and Cooldown. Next we have Weapon Mastery, and this is how it should look like for the Longbow. So get the middle first and then the whole bottom row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the Crossbow, so pretty much the same thing. Get the middle first and then the bottom row. Next, let's take a look at our gear. 
and all of this you can easily farm yourself. If you're interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in the description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So we are using Carnix's Nether Bow with traits like hit chance, heavy attack chance and critical hit chance. Next we have Rex Chimero's Crossbow with traits like hit chance, heavy attack chance and added attack speed. Next we have Divine Justicier Mask with mana regen, magic evasion and cooldown speed. Next we have Supreme Devotion with mana regen, skill damage resistance and debuff duration. Next we have Shadow Harvester Tunic with mana regen, ranged evasion and buff duration. Next we have Shadow Harvester Grips with max mana, mana regen and ranged evasion. Next we have Elusive Hex Weaver Pants with mana regen, magic evasion and debuff duration. Next we have Sabatons of the Field General with max mana, ranged evasion and movement speed. Next up we have Class of the Conqueror with max health, skill damage boost and buff duration. Next we have Braces of the Primal King with max health, skill damage resistance and debuff duration. Next we have the Violent Signet with max health, skill damage boost and buff duration. Next we have Amber Dimensional Band with max health, skill damage boost and buff duration. And finally we have Belt of the Midnight Hunt with max mana, skill damage resistance and debuff duration. Next up we have the stats and at the end game we want to get 50 strength, 50 dexterity and 40 perception. Next we have our guardian choice and the best one is the Shade Revenant Steno. This guy synergizes very well with our build because his projectiles that hit enemies will proc our mother nature's protest skill. So he will increase our damage by a massive amount. And now finally we have come to the gameplay. So the highest damage rotation is to use the Deadly Marker, then Selfless Diffusion, then Nature's Blessing, then Detonation Mark, then Wild Barrage, then Blitz, then Decisive Sniping, then Quick Fire, then Detonation Mark again, then Zephyr's Knock, then Quick Fire again, then Strafing, and now we finish it off with the Zephyr's Knock. Like I keep mentioning, if you're looking for a more in-depth look into this build, then feel free to watch my dedicated bow and crossbow video. And for the last build, we have Staff and Wand. This is the most versatile healer setup in the game because you can heal while also doing great amount of DPS. As our weapon combination has stronger and more spammable AoE abilities than any other healer combo, so this makes her preferred when farming in the open world and dungeons. If you enjoy traditional mage DPS builds but also want to heal and support allies, then this is the one for you. So let's take a look at our setup. And first off, we have our skills. So for defensive skill, we use Chaotic Shield. While for active skills, we get Touch of Despair, Serial Firebombs, Time for Punishment, Chain Lightning, Curse Explosion, Swift Healing, Corrupted Magic Circle, Inferno Wave, Judgment Lightning, High Focus, Inner Peace, and Karmic Haze. Because of specialization skills, we'll have Corrupted Magic Circle turn into the Decaying Touch. Next we have Skill Specialization, and for Touch of Despair, get Radius Increased, Effect Duration, and Curse. Next we have Time for Punishment and we don't select anything. Then for Curse Explosion we get Damage Increase. Then for Corrupted Magic Circle get Decaying Touch and additional damage. Then for Judgment Lightning select consecutive use and both damage transfers. Next we have Inner Peace and we don't want to select anything. Then for Serial Firebombs get Mobility, Radius Increase and Instant Casting. Then for Chain Lightning get both damage transfers. For Swift Healing get Consecutive Use. For Inferno Wave, get cooldown and consecutive use. Then for High Focus, select base damage boost. And finally for Karmic Haze, get radius increase and additional damage. Next we have Weapon Mastery. And this is how it should look like for the wand. So get the middle first, then the whole top row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the staff. So pretty much the same thing. Get the middle and then the bottom row. Next, let's take a look at our gear. And all of this you can easily farm yourself. If you are interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So first off, we are using Laquirus's Coveted Tome with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Tublex Shattering Quarterstaff with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Visor of the Infernal Herald with Melee Evasion, Ranged Evasion and Max Health. Next we have Supreme Devotion with Mana Region, Skill Damage Resistance and Debuff Duration. Next we have Swirling Essence Robe with Magic Evasion, Melee Evasion and Buff Duration. Next we have Gloom Guard Gauntlets with Melee Evasion, Ranged Evasion and Added Attack Speed. Next we have Breaches of the Executioner with Ranged Evasion, Magic Evasion and Debuff Duration. Next we have Swirling Essence Shoes with Magic Evasion, Melee Evasion and Max Health. Next up we have Collar of Decimation with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. 
Next, we have the Ancient Sarodama Braces with Mana Region, Skill Damage Resistance, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Etched Alabaster Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Sapphire Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. And finally, we have Belt of Endless Slaughter with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next up, we have the stats, and at the end game, we want to get 50 Strength and 50 Wisdom, and then put the rest of your leftover points into Dexterity. Next, we have our Guardian choice, and we have two best options. The first one is Lady Knight Commercia. If you consistently find yourself needing more defense, then go with her. Or perhaps, if you want more DPS, then use the Shade Revenant Steno. This Guardian has the highest damage in the game, as he can launch projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack. And now finally, we have come to the gameplay. And as this build is very versatile, I will give you multiple rotations. So the highest damage rotation is to use Touch of Despair, then Decaying Touch, then Serial Firebombs, then Touch of Despair again, and now finally use the Curse Explosion. Then next, we have a long DPS rotation for maximum damage. So start by using High Focus, then Time for Punishment, then Touch of Despair, then Serial Firebombs, then Inferno Wave, then Decaying Touch, then Touch of Despair again, and now we finish it off with the Curse Explosion. And now finally for healing. The Swift Healing is your main healing skill that has a low cooldown and can be cast up to 3 times. Our healer setup is made to support your team while doing as much damage as possible. But in case if you ever need to, then you can also switch 1 DPS skill for 1 healing skill. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe, and comment. If you are interested in more content, then check out my channel and I'll see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace!